Hello and welcome to the video. There is no Carlsen Neiman drama in this video. We're just going to look at the game of chess, uh, a very recent game played by Domaracho Kukesh, the Indian star. He's playing in the Spanish league and he's playing against the Going Jones. And in this game, especially the finish, reminds me a lot uh, about the famous game Rotlevi Rubinstein, one of the the most fam famous combinations of all time and well it shows in action how how pattern recognition often works we've also we, we had another video where uh, where we looked at you know the tactics of the game brought to rubinstein it might be one of the most important tactical games of all time to you know get a lot of checkmate patterns and tactical patterns we looked at the game by by anand where he sought inspiration from this game his win against Aronian. I'll, I'll link you to that video and, and the card. Uh, but let's get into it. So Kukash had the white pieces here and he's playing against Coin Jones, the Spanish league. So d4 was the chosen move by, by Kukash. c4, g6, knight c3. And well, a bit of a surprise here by, by Gawain. He usually plays the King's Indian, but not exclusively. He's written you know, large books on the King's Indian and has some chessable courses. But also you, you can't be a sitting duck, so he goes for the Grunfeld this time around. And, well, I haven't checked if, if uh, Kuk has always plays the system, but he goes for a rather quiet line here. Maybe he was taken aback a little bit, or surprised by the Grunfeld, the choice of the Grunfeld. But he goes for a quiet line here with e3. And, well, compared to the normal Grunfeld where uh, the exchange variation where we play like this, black will get you know pressure on the center with c5, with a pawn on e3. Uh, white center is more more uh, more secure, and he will try to play for e4 later in the game. So castles, Kuka uh, stuck on d5 and bishop c4. So the pawns sort of stay stabilized on e3 d4, but we're looking for the right opportunity later in the game to play e4. Takes takes c5. And here we see the difference, you know, with the pawn being on e4 uh, or being on e3. Now we have a lot more security in the center, so we just safely castle and keep the game going. The queen c7 indirectly hit the bishop on c4, we're threatening to take on d4. So white defends with queen to e2. Gawain gets the pieces out, knight to c6. Bishop a3, increasing the pressure, and uh, Gawain protects the pawn. Note though that white can take the pawn, but he was not interested. He played rook a to c1. If white were to take, well, first of all, he might have a problem with the c3 pawn, but second of all, even if he didn't, uh, a pawn sacrifice like this, where the white pawns are weak, the c4 square will be up, 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 uh, <laughs> occupied by black. The bishop will come here or here, and uh, we will control this square. A, lo a lot of tactics that are working for black. And this is common, well, here we see it in the Grunfeld, you see it in the Nimso, some lines. You can even see it in the French, and I have one game, which I linked to in the card, where I played against a former junior world champion, and I, I executed this, this pawn sacrifice successfully. But Gukesh just plays rook a to c1, lining uh, his rook up against the queen. And this will become important, bishop b7, e4. And Gawain played knight a5. But we see the importance of the rook on c1. And why he played the move, because if we take on d4, we take back, and now we see the situation. The rook against the queen lined up against each other, and this invites tactics. And this means that black can't take this pawn on d4. It's not hanging because of the simple tactic. Bishop takes f7, and then the queen is lost. So I can't take the pawn. He played knight a5. And of course, we want to keep this bishop. It's a strong bishop. Bishop d3, bishop a6. Now this position had been seen before, uh, a long time ago in Reggio Emilia in 1974, a game between Dubol and Lupi. I have not heard of these guys before, and I'm sure that, pretty sure that that game didn't register uh, on either player's uh, preparation before the game. But here we have a first new move of the game, Rook to B1 by Kukesh. Rook C to D1 was played in the other game. Rook c8, and now d5. 
and why this kind of threatening position into play c4. And whenever you get these pawns in the Grunfeld, the pawn to d5, and you can defend it with c4, usually something has gone wrong for black. So Gawain tries to attack the center immediately and, and break her up and place e6. Note that if, if he tries to block c4 himself by playing c4, you kind of ruin the dynamics of, of your pieces. The queen and the rook now are on, are on a blocked file. The knight on a5 can't come to c4. The white bishop on a3 gets a diagonal. The knight on f3 gets possibly a nice square on d4 if he wants. The rooks can centralize and the pawns can uh, start to be pushed. So this doesn't look very good for black. So Gawain, instead of closing thing, things down, he tries to play dynamically here with e6. White gets the desired center. Rook c to e8. And similar to the situation before with the rook on c1 and the queen on c7, the rook is lining up against the queen and this invites tactics and we see that the d5 pawn is actually hanging right now, so white gets out of the line of fire, plays queen to c2. And Gawain, well, he keeps going with uh, the attack, the attack on the center, that is, with f5. Very dynamic, but also very, very dangerous because his king is becoming dangerously exposed. Now, Gukas tries to keep control here with rook to e1. There's takes, takes, and takes. And white has a very pleasant position. He's kept the pawn on d5. Uh, the king is still weak. We see that, you know, the bishop can reroute here rather nicely to c to b2. The rooks can centralize. White has ideas like h4, h5. Uh, and black probably has to play queen d6 to try to keep the game going, but White is definitely uh, for choice, e even even more than that. So bishop c8 <coughs> invites white to uh, well start a nice offensive here, and Gukes does not miss his chance, and he plays d6. And the main idea here is simply to vacate the d5 square for the bishop and take advantage of this vulnerable king. Going took the pawn. Might as well, he comes under fire regardless, so might as well grab some material. Rook b to d1 with tempo hitting the queen, so we get bishop d5 here with check. And the king has to go to the corner. So black is up a pawn, and maybe for the time being thinking, okay, we'll be able to block the check here, we should be okay. But now there comes an avalanche of, of the white pieces, knight to g5. Now almost all the white pieces are becoming tremendously active around the king. We've got the bishops lined up. On the diagonals, we have a knight on a very nice square, rook on an open file ready, and the queen is active. Here in a top position, probably rook d8. Well, it, it was the computer move, but it loses material. Gawain went with bishop f5, and now a very nice move by, by Kuka. She plays queen to c3. Lining up on diagonals, Gawain took on e1, but he can hardly take the queen because we simply take here. He can only interpose the queen. But our idea is, of course, to win material, play knight of seven check. Now if you take with the rook, I will take here, and you can only interpose the rook. I will make you in two moves. So king g8, but now we can keep checking. And take on g7, and then take on, uh, on e8 with check, and, and white wins material. So Gawain tried rook to, to e1, rook takes e1, rook takes e1. And yeah, still a similar situation. You can't really uh, take on c3. h6 was played, but now uh, a very nice move. Queen takes g7. And at first it looks like, okay, takes, takes. Well, what's going on there? But we don't take. We actually play rook to e7. And notice these pieces, like I said, a nicely posted knight. The strong bishops on the diagonals, and now an active rook as well. Gawain resigned, we're going to take on g7. If you take on b2, you get mated on h7, a very nice mate. Sort of every piece has a function, and, and white being down so much material, it's a very aesthetic mate. But like I said, of course, this reminded me of uh, Rotlevi Rubenstein, the game we've looked at before on this channel. And yeah, I'm Linking to, linking to the Anand game, of course, the game of Wuxi Anand against Aronian, where a lot of these teams from the game are in effect. Let's just go to the key position in the Rotlevi-Rubenstein game. Let's flip it around. Rubenstein had black. 
where he uh, played rook takes c3, gave up the queen, and gave up the other rook just to access the diagonal, and then rook h3. And this is very similar to the Gukes game. We have the same, same strong bishops on the diagonals, the bishop pinning the queen to the king, same knight, and in this case the rook is uh, on the third rank, but it probably could do a similar function on the second rank. The main thing is if we take, and there's rook takes h2, just like in the Gukes game. <clears throat> so, very similar pieces, except the rook is coming in from, from another angle, but I'm sure that, pretty sure that he, you know, derived some inspiration from the famous uh, Rutlevi Rubinstein game. So yeah, Kukas just keeps going, you know, from strength to strength. And only a matter of time till uh, we're going to see him in, in some of these elite tournaments and who knows. Looking forward to see that and well, hopefully we'll be back with another chess video sooner rather than later. And I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.